podcasts supported by the new UCLA's Masters of Applied Statistics program, which teaches advanced data science to working professionals. All courses meet in the evenings. Local employees are encouraged to apply. Go to master.stat.ucla.edu. Studios. My mother, she would say that we all suffer three deaths. And the first death is the day that we give our last breath, the day that we die. Our second death is the day we're buried. And she would say never to be seen on the face of the earth again. And that seems so final. She says, no, the most final and most dreaded death of all is to be forgotten. It just goes deeper than a beautiful display of putting things together for an altar once a year. The remembrance of our ancestors has become a very important part of the way I, I guess, navigate the world. From Elia Studios, this is How to Relay. I'm Brian De Los Santos. Today is Dia de los Muertos. It's the time of year when the souls of those who've passed visit their loved ones again. Before we start, just know that Day of the Dead is not Mexican Halloween. This is Ofelia Esparza. I'm 90 years old, and I'm an artist. I'm a retired elementary school teacher. I believe I'm an activist. I'm involved with important things of my community. I have nine children, 16 grandchildren, and 13 great-grandchildren, and more coming. <laughs> she was born in East L.A. in 1932. I've always lived in East L.A. I live about four blocks from where I was born, really close to Calvary Cemetery. Ofelia is basically the matriarch of Dia de los Muertos here in L.A. She's a master of making ofrendas. Those are the altars or installations with things like cempanzuchil, photos, and other special objects to honor those who died. She's one of the most celebrated folk visual artists here in California, and is really the one who made Dia de los Muertos a thing around here. I actually learned this tradition with my mother. She was an altar maker for altars a year, related to the church, of course. And Day of the Dead was one of them, but it wasn't the biggest one. Her most important altar that I learned from creatively and artistically was the nacimientos because they were huge. They were half of her living room and she was known for them. Her mother, Mama Lupe, has been her biggest influence. Ofelia has spent decades working as a folk artist and teacher and in 2018, she was awarded the prestigious National Heritage Fellowship for her work in preserving this sacred tradition. People would come and see them. When I was a child, I would watch her, but then later I became part of it. The honoring it's not just a tradition or a devotion, it's an obligation. Hi. To learn more about this special tradition, we visited Ophelia at Self-Help Graphics and Art in East LA. It's a longtime art and cultural center for Latino and Chicano artists. It was founded in 1973, which is basically how long Ophelia has been here. She remembers the very first time, nearly 50 years ago. One day, as I was walking to get the bus on Brooklyn Avenue and uh, Gage, this old building that I had gone to, there was a sign there that said, instructors needed for Day of the Dead workshops. So I went and I met Sister Karen and I told her I was interested. And she says, do you know something about Day of the Dead? Oh yes, my mother practiced. I almost didn't finish talking, but I says, okay, come Saturdays, we're having the workshops and the artists will tell you what to do. And that's when I started. Ophelia has been teaching workshops here ever since. Her work is crucial to the preservation of Dia de los Muertos, the real tradition, the one her mother taught her. Her village is Juanimaro. It's in Guanajuato, but it's right on the border of Michoacan and all that region I call the cradle of Day of the Dead, the ancient Day of the Dead, the indigenous Day of the Dead. And so those traditions I grew up with. My mother and my husband died in 1991, so of course I had a personal altar for my mother there and then for my husband. And I think that was the beginning of these monumental pieces that I've been doing for so many years now. How does it make you feel that your art is shared and is shared widely, but also impacts a lot of people in our community here in Los Angeles and across the world? 
Well, you know, I never thought that I was doing that, but I've always adhered to the significance of Day of the Dead because I've had my own experience, how my mother it was so important for her to remember our, our loved ones and then learn about the ones who I never met. I came to realize the importance of that aspect, but it also carries our identity as a culture. I want to honor these people, not how they died, but how they were loved, how their parents, their family loved them. Now, several of Ophelia's nine children are involved in the tradition. My mother would be so happy because my children are so involved. My name is Rosana Esparza Ahrens. I'm the daughter of Ophelia Esparza, who's the daughter of Guadalupe Salazar Aviles, who is the daughter of Maria Salud Tinoco, who is the daughter of Matilde Tinoco, who is the daughter of Hipólita Tinoco, who is the daughter of Luz Mendoza, and many other daughters beyond them. So, and that's Maxi. <laughs> what about me? <laughs> Rosana has been making altares with her mother ever since she was a kid. She emphasizes the importance of the work they're doing today, especially as the tradition continues to be commodified in popular American culture. If you go to the big stores, you're going to find papel picado, you're going to find the tissue paper, the calacas, and the sugar skulls. But they were mass produced with no intention, no love or gratitude infused in the essence of these items. When we get together to make let's say the tissue paper flowers that you see up on the arch there, they take time. You know, I've turned it into a meditation. Making the flowers and sharing stories, it's cathartic because we realize that we share that pain of separation, but the joy of that memory. So there's this beautiful expression of love and gratitude and this sense of being connected in a very visceral way. Each year, Ofelia and Rosana build an altar at Self Help Graphics. This year, they built it in a corner in the gallery. It had exposed brick, drywall that looks beat up, paint that's sort of peeling back, and it all felt very rustic, sort of like we were outside. She named the ofrenda Amor Eterno, Eternal Love. Well, when I was still in this space, I loved it. I love that wall, and I love that vintage look. I always thought, oh, I would love to do an altar in this space. The altar includes offerings for her late husband and a long lineage of her family members with a special section for her mother, Mama Lupe. In the middle of the altar, there's a watercolor that Ophelia did of Mama Lupe with a hummingbird looking over an arc of marigolds or simbasuchi. The hummingbird is a symbol of the souls that come to visit us. It lends itself to an outdoor space. It could be a patio or it could be a cemetery tomb. So it isn't exactly like a traditional altar, but it reminded me of the tumbas in the cemeteries in Mexico. And the caption for Amor Eterno is, for my mom, whenever she's in her garden, she hears her mother's voice. And the garden is where she would respite from the busy kitchen or doing whatever she was doing in the house where her chiles grew and her tomates and nopales and where she harvested for the next meal. In that jardin, that's where Mama Lupe's voice lives. Working together as a family, how has that experience been like for you? I feel like the obligation is passed on to me and I accept it, I, I embrace it. There's this continuum of knowing the essence and the meaning of Day of the Dead and to preserve it. The sharing of stories and the practice of Day of the Dead has grounded me. We have ancestors and if I could imagine my grandmother, my grandfather on both sides of my family and all the ancestors behind them present with me and walking in to this interview or to a job or to a project, what am I afraid of? Nothing. That is really my mother's 
wishes for me. She emphasized the importance of remembering our ancestors, and she did it in her daily life. What a legacy to be loved and cherished even after death. It goes beyond the Day of the Dead celebration. And I was looking at this altar, the pouring of so many levels of gratitude and remembrance is, is touching. It's so vast. It shows the immediate connection to people, but then later on, this connection will be passed on. That's the legacy we have to carry. It makes an impact on not only the ones present, the people you know, but the ones who come next when your story is passed on. It's, that's a great thought. <laughs> That was Ofelia Esparza and her daughter Rosana Esparza Aarons. You can check out the altar they built for Dia de los Muertos this year at Self Help Graphics in East LA. This episode features tracks from Quetzal, a Chicano band also from East LA. Self Help Graphics is hosting a special celebration tomorrow night called Noche de Ofenda, where you can see all of Ofelia's work and the rest of these incredible installations. We'll have a link and some photos of Ophelia's work in our newsletter. Go subscribe at elias.com slash howtoLA. That's all from us, folks. We'll be back tomorrow with an election guide, helping you navigate this coming election. Alrighty, adios. Support for this podcast is made possible by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe that quality journalism makes Los Angeles a better place to live. This program is made possible in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people.